Good day, all, or rather, good morning. It's early here, about 6.30, and I just had to show the sunrise again. The bright pinks and orange are so beautiful. And you can see a line of geese swimming their way in. It looks to be a lovely, clear day, but it's going to be chilly but bright. So I thought for today, we shall take a little stroll through the wood and to the water and then come back inside and work on sketching. I think in today's world <laughs> and over the last few days, we all just need a quiet, calm, relaxing day. So we'll go in, have our coffee, and after the sun rises, we'll be off for a walk. So let's head out into our wood and go for a walk and just enjoy the warm sun on our back on this cool day. Do uh, excuse our boat graveyard as we call it. <laughs> we have a few boats left over from the uh, grandfather's time here and passing the big old logs that I hope to one day turn into a Victorian stumpery. We head around. Now I've taken you in this wood before, but if you are a new subscriber, uh, we own about three acres and some of it is wood and we've been trying to clear paths and make a, make it uh, more paths and each year we try to make that a little bit easier to walk through. Right now though it's mainly still full of leaves from the autumn so it's just a, a bit rustly. But all the, the soft pines with the wind and the sun shining on it, it's quite nice. And then this little path here leads around, and actually it goes past, uh, over to the right is a big tree that I'll share with you another day, and I shared in another post that I hope to build a little circular bench around. But for now, let's head out into our open field. And uh, this open field is uh, actually owned by our neighbors, but we, uh, we walk through it often, they don't mind, and actually they are only here in the summertime as well. So let's come into the clearing here and head on down to the water. And then we can walk down to this little harbor down here. And actually the tide is going out, so it's a nice view because the much of the sands of the shore, of the salty shore, will be showing. I still would love to get a better gimbal because the one I have now is not very good and it's not the easiest to use, but it's what I can afford and it will work. It's still much better than the shakiness of the uh, tripod, but hopefully you can uh, see the beauty. See the, see isn't that a, a great, that would make a wonderful sketch and I've sketched it many times. And with those slivers of shocking blue through the uh, golden ochre of the drying grass and the soft sandy yellow colors and then the jolts of green of the evergreens and then the soft almost foggy appearance of the deciduous trees which are now barren no leaves because it's midwinter although some of the uh, the dreaded oaks which hold on to their leaves all winter and then just continually drop them. I always like this to this one tree there in the center in, of the field with the sea behind coming into this little harbor. And again, this is like a little salt waterway that comes out of the open sea into our harbor then into the smaller bay and then wraps around into little salt marshes. Looks like I can see someone over on the other side. Now on the other side is um, there are little inlets that I think the public have access to, but on our side it's the end of a private point. So it's mainly fairly quiet. We run into our neighbors sometimes, although they're mainly just here in the summertime. We're one of a few people who stay year round. And I always think this is pretty too. This is our neighbor's little footpath through their woods down to this waterway. They usually keep their kayaks here, which have been put away for the winter. But it's a fun little sound. I think they actually made it from an old fence panel. We're nothing if not industrious, we New Englanders. 
But isn't that a pretty view? The old post, which almost looks like a uh, something from a dock. And look at the curvilinear line of that oak tree. And then the sound of the uh, boardwalk as we head down. And look at how quickly the tide is moving. Yes, here you can see the uh, these little pieces of wood propped up here. That's where they keep their kayaks to dry, but they are not there now because it is the beginning of January and they are probably somewhere else in the world. And you can see how quickly the tide's been moving out because this sand is wet right here. So where I'm standing right now, and if we look back this way, where I've just come down, see the tide would have been up to the edge of that normally. And then you can see down here how it makes these little, it's almost like little fairy homes and the roots exposed because we've had really severe high tides lately. So when the tide gets really, really high, it will just about breach this bank here. But I think the last tide was, it's normal about right around that area there. And you'll notice the uh, oyster traps of, or the oyster cages have been taken out for the season. But you can see the little, maybe you can make out the little buoy markers where they will go back in in the, in the springtime. And there are some docks jutting out. Oh, it looks like someone's working on actually adding quite a bit to a little cottage. And then onwards, the sea, the salty marsh, winds its way that way off into the woods. And if we were to keep walking this way, we could walk off into the woods. We're lucky because there's quite a bit of uh, conservation land around here, and some of it is also old, owned collectively by the uh, properties around here to stop it from being too overbuilt, which is nice. But look at that sea. Even though I know it's chilly, the sea, the mermaid in me, want longs to just walk in there and dive under, especially with my snorkel and eyeglass to, or my goggles to see what's going on. And so this way, it, it runs back out this way, out into the, into our harbor and then out into the sea. So yes, all of this could be, would have been underwater at higher tide. That's why it's so wet. But this is actually a good tide to walk at because it's much easier to walk this way. And then if we continue on this way, we can walk back home via our beach. But as I do want to get some drawing done today, oh, there's a little plane up there. A little Cessna maybe. I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up. But yes, it's a... Yes, it's a lovely day, but I want to get some sketching done. But I wanted to take you on a little bit of a walk and let some of you get out because I know right now so many of you, whether you're overseas or here in the States, some of you can't get out as much as you would like to or you're not allowed to. So hearing the sea and the wind and the grass, even my wellies on the leaves might just be a nice escape. And another view that's amazing to sketch and paint. And can you hear the sounds? It's funny, besides this place having an ever-changing view, it also has a song to it. And it, that song changes daily. The music of this place is, again, transfix you. And you can see how it's the sea starting to roll, boil a bit as the tides are quickly moving. And this time of year, the song of the wind in the dry, crisp grass and through the barren treetops. But yet in high summer, you get more bird song, and the sea sounds different, and even the grass has a different sound. Well, I guess that will do us for our walk today. I'm going to continue on my walk this way. I'll let you have a look back to where we came down through the open field, back towards the little rivulet of salt marsh winding its way into the woods, and then off around to our rocky sandy beach back home. But I'll shut you off now and uh, 
I'll turn you back on when we get inside and we can do some sketching. I hope you enjoyed this little walk and this little scape outside in the Cape Cod air. So we're back inside and I thought I would do a split screen as well and you can watch the birds feed and the sea move. Now, as I wanted to uh, play with possibly putting some clothing on the cat and the quail, I thought just for fun I would uh, isolate them from the lady in the parasol. And uh, since I wanted to pull the sketch over that I had already made of the cat, the quick outline, I needed to have him stand on something. So I put him on a bonnet on a stand. Now all I've done here, and again, this is just a study, so this isn't a finished piece, uh, but I figured I'd try the uh, a top hat on the cat, because I think he may be a he, and then on Una, a little fancy Victorian style hat. And uh, again, just a, me using a chalk and these are um, under layers of the sketching and I have both uh, the cat and the quail on separate layers and then I have their hats on separate layers so that if I want to change them or if I don't like the way they look I can shut them off and start over and uh, as I mentioned before at this stage when I'm just doing rough pencil sketching and some inking I like to use the chalk because it's, I find it's just probably the best representation for color and it has a nice grainy feel so that I can get an idea of how I want highs and lows and things to be. Once I do the final piece, it will be ink and, of course, pastels. So, um, yes, and here we have little Una with her pretty hat with roses and bow on. Now, I was actually starting to think, um, maybe when I do the story, I was wondering, and I want your opinion, do you think it would be sort of fun if some of the images were when the uh, animals are with a person, perhaps they are simply as an animal is with no clothing on, but then when they interact with each other and almost their sort of like fantasy world where they speak with one another, that's when they would be wearing their clothing. So on a page that has them with a person, they would just look as a natural animal. And on another page where they're conversing with one another, that's when they'd have little hats on or a little neckerchief or something like that. I thought it might be kind of a fun way to play with that idea of their world contrasting the world of the people. So just something to think about. I always overthink everything, so I should just be making a simple five-page illustrated story, um, but instead I have to overthink everything. But that's just the way my brain works. So <laughs> so we'll keep sketching and we'll come up with more ideas and, uh, and then we'll see how they work. Um, so just for today, just playing with the hat and such is what I was uh, felt up to. So, so yeah, let's go ahead and do that. And then now, uh, I guess I'm really, really hoping to, I keep thinking possibly a five or no more than 10 pages for this first story, because I really want to just stretch my muscles and get that practice of an illustrated story. Uh, now I probably, I'll probably share a little bit of the storyline, um, on my next vlog. So I'm hoping to get this one up and, uh, post it tonight which is Friday which is normally when I would post uh, but actually put it up for a premiere for Saturday so that um, I know a lot of us are missing having the chance to speak on Lalande so I figured it may if I put it up as a premiere we can chat a bit tonight and into tomorrow so all right well I think that's going to do it for us today I hope you enjoyed our walk I hope you enjoyed me sketching and playing about. And again, this isn't a finished sketch or a finished piece. It's just a fun sketch. But uh, I'm enjoying playing with the characters and kind of thinking about them in a storyline. So, all right, let's end uh, that out. And uh, actually, maybe I will share my sunset from last night. So let's do that. Well, is it any wonder that I'm obsessed with pink? Look at how glorious the pinks and the blues and the purples are in tonight's sunset. And where the reflection of the clouds hits the harbor, see how it brings in striations of orangey sherbet colors? And then to the left are the soft pastel-y purples and pinks. And because the clouds are sitting rather high, you can see the orange sky in the background and then it just magnifies the purples and pinks of the cloud and the reflection. And I'm not enhancing this. This is literally how it looks. And honestly, I think it looks even better in real life. But I hope you enjoyed today's vlog. And we will end here. I know it's not the best time for everyone in the world, but 
I do hope that we can just take moments to be quiet and calm and to also enjoy that we can have one another's company online. And uh, I shall see you in the chats and in the comments. And no matter what, remember, stay creative. Cheers. Thank you.